Hello, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the revenue recognition principle, one of the foundation principles of the accrual method, very important principle to understand. The basic question to ask for a revenue recognition principle is, when should we recognize revenue? If we ask that question to most people, most people respond that revenue should be recognized when we receive cash. That is not exactly when we're going to recognize revenue under a revenue recognition principle. And the reason people think that most of the time is because we start to equate cash with revenue because we tend to get paid most of the time in cash. That's why we have cash. But in order to understand the revenue recognition principle, we need to understand that revenue is not equal to cash. We can look at some examples in terms of our W-2 wages, even in terms of W-2 wages. We get things like health insurance possibly or life insurance possibly or um, paid vacation and those types of things. That's a form of compensation that really isn't cash. We're getting compensation for the work we did. We can also think of a barter situation, for an example. If we did bookkeeping work for a restaurant and they gave us a free our meals for that work that we did, I was about to say free meals, but they're not free. We worked for them, we earned the meals, and we got the meals as a return for the revenue that we then earned rather than getting cash. When I say this to people, a lot of people say that I would never receive cash. I would never do work for anything other than cash. We only work for cash. I would never work in order to receive meals rather than cash. If that's the case, that might be a good policy, but that doesn't mean that cash then is equivalent to revenue. That just means that cash is the only form of payment that we will accept for the work that we do. And it's important to keep that distinction because that distinction really is the basis of what the revenue recognition principle is. For example, let's say that we here are the owner and we're going to do computer work for the customer. At that point in time that we do the computer service, that is when we have earned the revenue. doesn't matter when the cash is we received, that's when we have earned it. Now we could imagine a situation where we got paid in the past. The customer paid us in the past for the work we did today. Well, that still means that the work we did today means that we have now earned the cash, earned the revenue related to the cash that we received in the past. When the customer gave us that money, basically had a contract at that point in time for us to do the work. When we did the work, we earned it. We can also think of a situation where the customer is going to pay us in the future. In that situation, we earned the, the revenue today still when we did the work, and the customer is fulfilling the contract in the future when they pay us with the money. And of course, we can think of a situation where the customer pays us at the same point in time. And at this case, we are recognizing revenue at the same point in time we received cash. However, there's a subtle difference. We're recognizing the revenue at this point in time because it's when we did the work, not because we received the cash. You may be thinking, well, that's a subtle difference. What does that difference really matter? Well, it's important because there could be situations where this isn't the case, where we don't get the cash at the same point in time. And it's also important for us to just understand the principle because the same principle is going to be applied or a similar format of it to things like the expense side when we get to the matching principle. For example, we could think of a situation where we did customer service, we did the computer service, and the customer didn't pay us. We billed the customer. At that point in time, the customer has given us basically an IOU at that point in time. We earned the money at this point in time. We sent out a bill to the customer. The customer is then going to pay us in the future. And that means basically have a contract that the customer will then pay us. That IOU is going to go on the books as accounts receivable. Accounts receivable represents the money that is owed to us. We're actually going to tell the readers of our financial statements that we have an asset of an IOU. It's not cash. But we expect to get that cash within something like 30 days. We're going to receive that cash from the customer. We're not going to recognize revenue when we receive the cash from the IOU. We recognize revenue when we got the IOU because that's the time period that we did the work. When I first explained this to a lot of people, a lot of people don't like this idea of getting an, an IOU for the work that is done. They would say that I would never do a transaction like that. If we go out and do computer service, we expect to get paid in cash. Therefore, I'm on a cash basis because I would never do work for an IOU. But just keep in mind that the decision for us to not do work except to receive cash at that point in time is not the same thing as the cash basis versus accrual basis decision. We could make that policy decision and it will be distinct from uh, the decision of whether we have cash or accrual basis. 
Also, that decision really depends on the type of business that we are in. For example, some businesses, we generally have to bill and receive the money in the future. For example, if we're a CPA firm or a law firm, we might get a retainer or a down payment, but we're really going to have to track our time, bill the client, probably receive the money in the future. If we do a business like this, where we do computer service, maybe it's possible for us to go out and just get the money at the same point in time, such as this. We might have a policy saying we're only going to do work if we get the money at that point in time. Again, that doesn't mean that we're necessarily on a cash basis. We could still be on an accrual basis. It just so happens that we are recognizing the revenue at the same point in time that we get the cash, but we're doing that because that happens to be the point in time in which we did the work. Important distinction because we're gonna use a similar principle on an accrual basis when we move to the expense side of things with the matching principle.